Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 6C. This is the third of three tutorials in the series related to accounting for trouble debt restructuring. This tutorial focuses on substantial modification of trouble debt. This tutorial has five learning objectives. The first will be to review the accounting for substantial modification, restructuring of troubled debt from both debtor and creditor perspectives. The second will be to review the calculation of the concession amount for troubled debt restructuring. Third, to determine the type of modification of troubled debt restructuring using the 10% threshold, and that's how we'll know that this is a substantial modification. Fourth, to record any appropriate debtor entries for substantial modification of restructure. And fifth, to record the appropriate creditor entries to record the impairment of any restructured debt. This tutorial is based on the Flockhart Industries C version of the problem, so make sure that you download and preview the correct file. And the first requirement will be to conduct the necessary test to determine whether or not the modification of terms related to the note is minor or substantial. Here's what we have. The carrying value of this note at January 1st, 2020, when the note is taken on, was determined to be 436,048. So this time this is based on a five-year note at 7% interest with 23,750 in payments and a future value of 475,000. But the modification is made on January 1st, 2023, and that's the same as December 31st, 2022. And with two payments remaining, the present value of this would be 457824 Now this is the same, exactly the same as we had determined in the previous tutorial 6B under minor modifications. The first thing that we need to make sure that we remember here are the concessions that were granted by the debtors. The first concession is a reduction of principal to 400000 from 475000 So this is a different scenario from tutorial 6b. And in this case, there's a reduction in principal. So in the previous tutorial, it was a reduction to 450000 and an extension of one year. This time, it's a reduction to 400000 and a 10% payment reduction, but no extension in the terms. So what we have to do is basically follow the same process as we did before to determine the type of modification. So we take the carrying value of the old debt from the present value table, 457,824. We subtract the present value discounted at the historical rate, and that's the PV of the new cash flows. So factoring in both the 10% revision of the payment, so 23,750 minus 10% or times 90%, gives us a revised payment of 21375 and the future value or the amount due at the end of the term is 400000 That gives us a present value of $388,022. The concession amount is the difference between those two, 69802 If we compare to 10% of the original value, that gives us a difference of 45782 and therefore, we determine that this is indeed a substantial modification of terms because the concession amount of 69802 is greater than the 10% uh, carrying value of the debt. So in this case, here we'll have the old debt it will be settled and a new debt will be assumed by Flockhart. The next requirement, number two, will be to prepare any necessary journal entries to record the modification of terms for the note payable for BSL on January 1st, 2023. So here's what we have. The value of the note at January 1st, 2023 was the 457,824 from the amortization table. What we have now is to calculate the present value of the impaired cash flows using the historical rate historical rate is 7%. There's still two periods remaining. The payment has dropped to 21375 and the future value at the end is 400000 which gives us 388022 That results in an impairment loss of 69802 and once again, that's equal to the concession amount. We can show in our amortization table here, we have two payments left of 21375 a 7% yield will result in effective interest rates as shown. And we go from a new present value of 388022 to $400,000. 
And again, if the impairment is booked by BSL, the yield has to stay at 7% to arrive at the $400,000 final amount. So now we can go ahead and record the journal entries for this. On January 1st, we're going to debit our bad debt expense, 69802, and credit the note receivable to end up with the correct value. And we'll record that uh, as an impairment, a restructured debt from Flockhart. Again, as with the previous tutorial, no allowance is used. The modification here is substantial and is considered a settlement, not an adjustment. Okay, now we can proceed to the final requirements three and four. Requirement three, you're going to prepare a revised amortization schedule for the note payable for Flockhart, assuming a given rate of 4%. In this case, we didn't recalculate a rate. The problem gives us a rate of 4%, and so that's what we're going to use. And the fourth requirement, to prepare any necessary journal entries for Flockhart on January 1st, 2023. For the revised amortization, we're going to calculate a new carrying value for Flockhart based on two payments remaining, a revised interest rate of 4 IY because the market rate provided is 4%. The new payment is 21375 and the future value is $400,000. So that will give us a new carrying value of 410138 And if you complete the table with two payments left at a 4% yield, you should end up at $400,000. Finally, we can record the journal entry at January 1st, 2023. What we're going to have to do here is settle the note. So on January 1st, we're going to debit the old note for 457824 We're going to record a new note at 410138 based on the revised present value and the market rate. This results in a gain on restructuring of debt of 47686 That's to record the restructuring of the debt to BSL under substantial modification of terms. Okay, so now we can review some key points to remember. First, if the creditor in this case, BSL, of course, grants concessions, as we've seen before, reduced interest rate, maturity, reduction in face value, etc. In this case, the company provided a reduced face rate and a change in the payment. In doing so, we have to remember that there is a 10% threshold that's used to determine if the concession is minor or substantial. In this case, it was substantial. If the present value of the new terms is greater than 10% different from the present value of the remaining cash flows of the old debt, then it's considered to be a settlement and not an adjustment, and we had that in this case. Next, of course, for the debtor, the old debt is removed and replaced with a new debt based on the revised terms, so that's what we did here. And a gain or loss on the restructure is recorded by the debtor. Finally, the creditor records an impairment equal to the concession amount. So that concludes tutorial 6C. If you'd like to go back and refer to tutorial 6A again for settlement of troubled debt, you can do so. And if you need to review minor modification of terms, then please go back to look at tutorial 6B. We hope you found these useful.